As always, if you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try the question before listening on. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the equation that relates the electric potential produced by point charges. So we know from that equation that the electric potential is equal to a constant multiplied by the charge divided by the distance. We can see that for part A, they're asking the electric potential produced by the one microcoulomb charge. So we're going to use a distance from that one microcoulomb charge to point P, which is labeled as 0.5 meters. So really, all we need to do is plug in the known values. Note that the charge is given in microcoulombs, so we'll have to multiply it by 10 to the minus 6 in order to convert it into coulombs. So when we plug in all the known values and compute the answer, we get a value of approximately 1.8 times 10 to the positive 4. And the unit we can use for electric potential is just volts. So this would be the correct answer to part A. For part B, it's very similar. We're just being asked to calculate the electric potential due to the other charge. And so we're basically going to plug in the same things except for the charge. We're going to change that to negative 2 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. So we've gone ahead and plugged in all the known values, and when we compute that, we get an electric potential of approximately negative 3.6 times 10 to the positive fourth. And again, the unit is volts. Notice the negative sign is present because the second charge was indeed negative. We don't take the absolute value when using this equation. We simply keep whatever the sign of the charge is. So this would be the correct answer to part B. For part C, to calculate the total potential at point P, all we have to do is add up the two potentials we found in parts A and B. Notice these are not vector quantities, so we don't have to find any components or do anything fancy like that. We simply add the values that we got in part A and B. And when we add those together, we get a total potential of approximately negative 1.8 times 10 to the positive fourth volts. So that's the correct answer to part C. For part D, we can calculate the work required to move a 3 microcoulomb charge from infinity to point P by remembering that the work done is simply equal to the product of the charge and the change in potential. Now, by change in potential, we would mean the final potential minus the initial potential. Notice that the final potential would be the potential at point P because that's the final location of the charge. And then the initial potential would be the potential at infinity. Now, the potential at infinity is considered to be zero. So this term V sub infinity is actually just going to disappear in the equation. So we've gone ahead and plugged in the known values. Notice again that we converted the given charge into coulombs by multiplying by 10 to the minus 6. And then we've plugged in the potential that we found at point P earlier. And so when we compute this, we get a value for the work of approximately negative 5.4 times 10 to the negative 2. And then the standard unit of work would be joules. So this is the correct answer to part D. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for other videos. Remember, you're welcome to send your own question into this email address and I'll do my best to respond to it via YouTube.